What's up, everybody? This is Zach with the Nerd Cave, and I'm joined along, as always, with... Derek. Derek, we've got a hulking mask of news. Yes. So much stuff has happened since last week. It has just been piling up. We did an early yeah. episode last week. We did one mm-hmm. on Wednesday, and the gaming news gods laughed. They laughed yeah, at like, us and just threw like, everything You thought this was all going to be it, huh? Yep. <laughs> because last week was pretty pretty thin compared to, yeah. like, we did the Nintendo Direct and everything. They'll say, yeah, that was the highlight of the entire show was the Direct. That's pretty much it. And today, if you're watching live, everybody, we're going to be covering the state of play uh, after the show proper and everything. So stick tuned to that. If you're watching this on the replay, we covered the state of play in a different video because it's going to be separate. So there you go. Go check that one out as well. Uh, Welcome, everyone, in the chat. We do go live each and every week over on twitch.tv slash nerdcave network. We do stream normally uh, video game plays and all of that kind of stuff mm-hmm. that didn't make any sense but that's what we're calling video game plays uh every monday thursday at seven o'clock and we do a community event every tuesday at seven o'clock and then saturday morning guys we hang out at 10 a.m playing some video game plays playing some video game plays so are they just like peyton manning shouting omaha all the time omaha, He's, omaha. Just call play. <laughs> <laughs> nebraska nebraska <laughs> uh yes that's exactly what video game plays are guys and then we do this week this weekly it changes we'll let you know uh every sunday night when the show is going to be or we could ask Derek right now what is your schedule next week we'll put him on the spot next thursday next thursday guys two week from today 2 p.m we'll be back here live with more video game news Now, to get into it, guys, BlizzCon. It happened last week. There was a lot of stuff. Uh, I don't think they asked anyone, did they play on their cell phones this this year? Oh, my gosh. (laughs) Thank goodness they didn't redo that terrible take. (laughs) Oh, my gosh. Um, And it was kind of surprising because you texted me and was like, hey, did you watch any of BlizzCon? And I'm like, no, I didn't even know it was Friday. (laughs) So I was like, I I was oblivious that it all happened. Yeah, it was it was kind of under the radar this year uh, to yeah. get into it because there's a lot of stuff going on today, guys. While Burning Crusade Classic launches this year and will have more than the original classic, may make Wrath of the Lich King classic if it is what the community wants. Uh, I think yep. you know doing more of that kind of pulling some of the older content out of WoW mm-hmm. as a whole is a good idea. That way, it, it you know uh, if you play. Uh, modern warfare war zone doing anything yeah. like, with that that thing is a hulking mass of beast so i yeah. think they're trying to avoid having the same kind of issues with that plus also bringing in more content into classic i know when classic launched it was really really big for a lot of people uh, so i'm glad to see that they're continuing to support it um yep. i never played because i know when it I about to say I never got into the WoW train either, but you know, especially if it if it launches better than what Classic did, because that was Classic's problem when it came out last year. Is it came out and it was buggy and it w- did servers weren't acting right. So hopefully they get that fixed out the gate for Burning Crusade. Yeah, I'm 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 hoping that they do uh, a better job of that as well. Um, yeah. Moving on, something that was kind of surprising, but I think they also. Uh, foreshadowed this a little bit more diablo Mm -hmm. 2 resurrected arrives this year and will come to all current platforms yes even switch says derek in the notes here (laughs) and won't have cross play at launch but will be added later on shows uh new there's new rogue rogue class for diablo 4 and will have multiple permutations such as archer or assassin so yeah they showed a lot of uh diablo 4 and it looks mm-hmm. gorgeous. Looks really good. Um, probably won't play it. I played Diablo yeah. 3. Uh, enjoyed the little bit I, did, I got to play. Uh, the biggest thing is like finding people to play Diablo with was yeah. like my hardest thing to do. But now it's like I'm, I don't really enjoy that game 
anymore so it's like okay whatever yeah. uh, but it does look really really cool and then diablo 2 i know a lot of people love diablo 2 yep. so i think a lot of them uh is are going to be happy about getting that uh aurora says wait mobile 2 because they took diablo off my pre-registration list it didn't say mobile from what i read i know it's pc and all current platforms like both playstations both xboxes and switch but maybe it'll come to mobile later or at least maybe if they do like a game pass thing it'll maybe come to game pass mobile eventually but they did not say mobile in their initial statement yeah i think they um after what they stepped in a few years ago <laughs> yeah. they, they might be yeah. on like trying to miss the bubble market right now i'm not 100 yeah. percent sure on that aurora but uh We'll keep our ear to the ground and see uh, what the rumblings are uh, in the future for Diablo and all of its siblings. One uh, one thing that they didn't say that I was going to be, I'm sure, I'm sure it'll be a fall game for them, uh, maybe late summer. But uh, I wonder if they're going to do because some of Activision Blizzard's games, they've said whether you get a free upgrade to the next gen versions or not. They didn't really state if you bought like the PS4 or Xbox One, do you get a free upgrade or not? Cause, but but I guess we'll see closer to time. Yeah, I I don't. Activision is not Activision Blizzard is not about that free life. I can tell you that. Yeah, like I literally, they, they're, they're letting you get Crash Bandicoot uh, for a free upgrade, but well, that's a little bit different because it's like that's the Activision side of things. Yeah, but like Blizzard side of things, like like we've never have gotten a crossplay for Overwatch. And I own Overwatch on PC and PlayStation. So none That's of that. That's a good point. Yeah. I didn't even realize that. Holy yeah. cow. Yeah. So it's definitely, I, I don't feel like they're going to give anything free away. Um, it's like yeah. Nintendo. You can just keep buying Super Mario <laughs> Brothers over and over again for every <laughs> flipping console. <laughs> yeah. But speaking of Overwatch, Overwatch yep. 2 details uh, include major overhauls, including role changes, new abilities, maps, and more. Now, this is the big part of the show, guys. So if you're yeah. an Overwatch fan, buckle in. I was about to say, this is the, you were most excited for this, obviously, and you texted me the other night and was like, yeah, we're, we're going to be talking mostly about <laughs> Overwatch 2 with this one. So <laughs> Yes, yes, we are. We're, that's, that's what it's about, guys, is Overwatch 2. Um, so just a little, little segue. I played Overwatch last night for the first time in a long time, man. Yeah. Um, I'm talking about months. I probably haven't played in like six months. It's been a while. Uh, but I jumped in, first game. Because I, I was feeling it. I was like, I got to get in the headspace for this tomorrow. I got to get in the headspace for this. So I got in, got my first game. I only played one. I picked Mercy. I picked my main. And mm. oh, man. Oh, man. It was so good. Have Mercy? Oh, yeah. They, like, I was getting <laughs> targeted like no one's business last night. I was Glad like, to see nothing's changed. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, it was so bad, but it was so good. Like, I got over 10,000 heals, uh, heal points, uh, which mm -hmm. usually I average around, like, six to eight. Uh, but, like, first wow. game out, I got uh, 10,000. I was like, holy moly, Batman. Uh, but it was, it was because... Uh, my team sucked. Uh, <laughs> they kept getting damaged, but I kept I kept them alive. So anyway, uh, to Overwatch 2 news, guys, multiplayer in Overwatch has been upgraded and changing to the roles. Role passives have been added, in which are passive abilities intrinsic to each role in the game. Tank heroes right now have the ability knock down, knock back reduction and generate less ultimate charge when enemies are shooting at them. Damage dealers have increased movement speed Support heroes have automatic healing after a while, which Mercy does have automatic healing already, but it will be a mm -hmm. smaller amount compared to Mercy uh, for healers. Takes have been significantly changed, being altered so that they are brawlers rather than protectors and just stand back. Reinhardt now has two fire strikes and his charge can be canceled and steered more aggressively, which is great because <laughs> like if you use any, uh, any of uh, his like his charge, it's just like a train just go. <laughs> and that's <laughs> like, you don't really like, you can't even stop, but now there is a cancel uh, to his nice. charge, which is awesome. Uh, it's going to make playing him a lot, lot much, much better. Um, Weapons are being upgraded with new visual animations and audio to make them sound punchier and more impactful. 
convolution reverb has been added to make the weapons feel like they're in the environment that they're being shot in. Two new maps are coming to the game, Rome and New York City, and hero missions are being added and are PvE co-op modes that allow you to take on enemies as you level up your heroes. These missions will bring each hero's personality and story and and the aim is to have hundreds of these, each with varying enemies and having different object objectives, such as gathering canisters and returning them to a position. Some will take place in existing maps or in new locations, expanding existing maps as well. Uh, that was pretty awesome to see. It would be like um, several older maps that we've seen a lot of uh, that they would have like a different path that you could go off on. Uh, the hero missions is something that I'm really, really interested in because mm -hmm. we are finally getting like a co-op side of things with people yeah. to play with. Uh, like when I first got into Overwatch, I guys, I'm going to be honest. I hated Overwatch. I 100% hated Overwatch. Yeah. I made fun of Overwatch, uh, but if they would, I did. I'm y'all gonna look back at the old stuff. Like I made fun of Overwatch all the time. Uh, pretty much anything Robbie enjoyed, I made fun of. Oh, what? Um, yeah. poor Robbie. <laughs> but like, I I didn't enjoy it. But if they would have had that PVE, I would have really enjoyed that. That would have been something fun because like having that co-op thing is really interesting to me. Uh, and the the when you're shooting a gun, like it's actually going to like recoil because now it's just like, like there's really not much to it. Um, but that plus the audio, uh, like they're taking guns into different places, like shooting in a hallway is going to feel different than shooting in a larger room or a smaller room or shooting outside of a building with the taller buildings or in a more open space. So there, there's a lot of attention to detail uh, that they're putting into the game, which I'm really, really liking. Uh, the two mm -hmm. uh, maps that they showed, uh, Rome and New York, Rome looks really, really cool uh, because mm. it's like all of this is like very Overwatch um minded as in like like the style like they're going to take these cities and make them look like it would be in the overwatch universe but they look really really cool and there's a lot of attention to detail they were even talking about um that one of their people that work on the game they he went to rome before they started working on it so he had all mm. of these pictures so they got yeah. like all of his pictures of like all these statues and all these intricate things in rome to like model inside the game and i was like that's really cool um and then with new york it's a very art deco kind of looking new york it's not like mm -hmm. the new york we know now but it's like that very stylized uh new york mm -hmm. which i'm i really enjoy uh, i think that's really really cool and then they also talked about like the uh, progression in Overwatch 2 has been altered with talents, giving each character three skill trees which they can pick from, slowly building Ow. your hero as you play more. One example was Soldier 76's healing canisters being attached to his body, traveling with him, different than w what he does now is like he throws it down. Throws it in the ground, right? Yeah, and it creates like a, a circle, so it would be... Uh, that would be there and you can also upgrade a little bit further where that circle will also knock back em enemies and everything so mm -hmm. it's really really cool um when it comes to null sector which is going to be the enemies and everything there are several different types because what we saw from the first um the first set of uh, images and the the movie and everything that they showed last year's uh, BlizzCon uh, that it was very very basic uh, null sector enemies, but they've went in and they've created different types, not just like more HP and they hit harder, but they're different. There's flying types. There's ones that uh, have poison. There's one. It's like all sorts of different things. I think that's going to be really cool because uh, we've played enough video games, everybody. That yeah. if you don't have good enemies. It is going to be really boring. <laughs> it's going to be really, it's the, really boring. Uh, the enemies for when you were in the Batmobile in Arkham Knight. <laughs> Just yes. rinse and repeat and add yes. more. Yes. Oh, my God. I don't even rhyme. I love Arkham Knight, but that was that was bad. Yeah. That was bad. Yeah. Uh, the next big thing from Overwatch 2, and guys, I know we said it from the beginning. This is a lot of Overwatch 2 news because mm -hmm. I'm excited about it. Because I want this, <laughs> and we're not getting it this year, I don't think, 100%. It's going to be a next-year game, I'm sure. Yeah. Uh, Overwatch 2 uh, story will focus on 
the heroes who rejoined during Zero Hour Cinematic and the second uprising of the Omnix, how big it is and how far spread it is. Each story mentioned will have its own cinematic intro and outro to help to tell the story and its own location and maps. These aren't reused areas. Hero choices and NPCs will also be in the campaign. The campaign aims to mesh the story and narrative with its own gameplay so that when a war is happening in a cinematic, it feels the way you would you play. New tech has been created to allow events to happen as you walk and walk by and really put you in the middle of the action. Relationships will also develop as you choose characters and play with them over the course of the game. Branching dialogue hmm. has been implemented to accommodate this and to get you relevant lines depending on who you choose. Uh, and then they did some update on uh Farah, reaper widowmaker and mccree's character designs uh but that mm -hmm. is awesome because getting it feels very rpg yes the the skill trees that they showed is like a rpg heaven mm -hmm. like it is wow. gorgeous it's like this is what i've wanted from overwatch um and of course like the the online multiplayer part of it i i don't think you're going to have that i'm not sure now they haven't said that they aren't including that uh like your right. upgrades and everything uh, i would just be really hard to balance everything if that was the case but anyway yeah the uh, the story mode looks really really cool i'm curious to mm -hmm. see how it all is going to work out and everything because you get to choose what heroes you're going to play as and that's yeah. what it was talking about and like how the dialogue and your you can choose things like that is so cool. Like, yeah, that feels very like mass effect dragon age, you know? Yes. Yeah. Yes. So I'm all about that guys. We, <laughs> I want to just say when overwatch two comes out, we're going to be playing the story mode a bunch of times with a bunch of different characters, just to right. see the, the different branching paths and everything and see how the different characters interact with one another and everything. It's going to be really, really fun. Um, and it feels very like Avengers too, especially when you mm -hmm. like talk about the hero missions. The first thing that um, comes to mind is like the war table and it has like each hero specific like story chain involved with it. So that feels very like Avengers meets uh, RPG, like Mass Effect type type stuff. So, yeah. And I, I'm oh, guys, I don't know if you're as excited as I am. <laughs> I'm definitely excited. I know there was a lot of information. Yeah. But the thing that I got from all of it, uh, from watching it this past weekend, was that there's a lot of love and care being put yep. into Overwatch 2. That it's not just the multiplayer, it's not just the the hero missions, it's not just the story, but it is the overall game that they're working mm -hmm. on, and then they're putting love and care and attention to it. Uh, the the redesigns of characters, um, taking what's important for each one of them, um, and really, you know doing something new and like the recoil and the sound, like all of these different things, like that, that means a lot to me. It's like, I would rather wait a while and get a good game that's developed yeah. well, and then get something that's quicker and rushed. So when they said, you know, we're not going to announce a date, you know, we're still working on it, putting a lot of stuff in it. It was like, Hey, I'm fine with that. You know, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Build it beautiful. Yeah, build it beautiful, you know. So I'm I'm very excited uh, for that. Anything you wanted to add, Derek? Oh, I was just gonna say, um, you know, it's it's definitely shows a labor of love. Like I think Blizzard has found their Call of Duty without having to annualize it every year. Like they take like the stuff that you know the popularity of what Call of Duty has made for Activision side, and but they take it was like, hey, let's just not just churn it out like every year or two years. Let's just focus on a sequel. Take the things people love add in stuff that makes sense um especially for what the with the type of game we want to make and it's just like here you go <laughs> yeah exactly like i would rather have a game last a long time yeah and it be really good like it might take longer to develop but i'd rather have a game last a long time than every year a new iteration come out and yeah like i i know that's a way to churn money and all of that and i know that's why we've talked about you know, games of services and all of that. Yeah. If it's done well, it can, you know, like, wow, it's been going on forever. Like, yeah, like forever. Decades. So, you know, so it's like, it can do well if there's love and attention put into it. Yeah. Let's catch up with the chat real quick. Okay. Uh, Aurora says, are there hackers in overwatch? I've been having some weird matches lately on PS4. Um, 
I'm sure that there are. I haven't yeah. actually ran into hacker. I've ran into a lot of bad players, but I've never ran into yeah. hackers uh, before uh, in the game. So I'm not 100% sure on that one. Uh, Dan says, I still don't care for Overwatch. That's okay. <laughs> That's okay, because I definitely was there for a very, very long time. Aurora also says Soldier 76 Recall is ridiculous. I made it ridiculous instead of ridiculous, but there you go. Yeah, I will say I can confirm on that one, because I played the last time I played Overwatch, I used Soldier 76 a lot, and his recoil was stupid. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. can confirm. One thing I want to ask you real quick before we go on. Mm-hmm. So if, they, if, if Blizzard came to you and says, Zach, we have to revamp this game. We're going to tear out all this stuff, but we'll let you, we'll let you keep one thing in the game of your choosing that you really enjoy for Overwatch 2. What is that? Like what sticks out to you the most that you love that they're putting in that in Overwatch 2? Hmm. Hmm. Mercy. They can get rid of everything else. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm talking but, about more like features, so um features um hmm I don't know. There's this like everything works so well together in Overwatch yeah. that it would be like almost impossible just to like rip everything out and then just keep one thing. Um, yeah, I think the biggest thing with Overwatch that I like that they've done is having um, I can't remember the exact way they phrase it. Um I think it's roll lock or something like that, because it used to be when I first started playing Overwatch where you could pick, you can have a whole team of just DPS or you yeah. can have a whole team, yeah. but having it where people have to pick, there's going to be two tanks, two DPS and two mm-hmm. healers like right. that. That system has helped save Overwatch because it was so yeah. bad. It was so toxic because of that. Um, yeah, like, and and, and like, I mean, there was there was a place for that, you know, because I know in like they're limited, like when they do when you go to the arcade, they still have that like as mm-hmm. special modes from time to time. Yeah. So there is a place for that for people who just get tired of doing like the same old thing and just want to let loose and have fun. But yeah, no, that shouldn't be the focus going forward. Yeah. And like having it where it is, um, you know, they can choose like you, you can go yeah. in, like you said, arcade and play that way. But like having like the base game being um, where, you know, you're going to play by the rules that are set up because that's the way to play uh, the game and be effective and everything. But, yeah, I definitely with that. One thing that I did see and I'm so excited about this. One of the hero abilities for Mercy. And you can tell I'm a Mercy man, guys. (laughs) (laughs) Clearly, I I like Lucio, too. I like Lucio, too. I've gotten used to playing as him. Uh, mm-hmm. as well him and mora like i'm a i'm a healer guys Mora, uh, that's my girl yeah i like more too <laughs> we need to play you got it on playstation Derek? yes yeah i do okay. i have it on both okay. playstation and xbox actually okay well i have to plug in my my keyboard then anyway uh so okay. i what they were saying about mercy that they're bringing back the team res as one of her like abilities that you can unlock because that used to be her ultimate mm. was she could raise her whole team. Yeah. Oh, like, that's right. Yeah. So Holy cow. Like, that is one of the things that you would have to work through her skill tree and be able to do, but you would be able to res your whole team again. I'm like, yeah. Wow. Yes. Wow. <laughs> so that's I awesome. Super, super excited. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay. Everybody live. Everybody live. <laughs> Aurora says she's a healer too. We got all the healers in here, guys. If you play Overwatch, let us know what role you play. You play DPS or tank. I like tank as well. Those are the two that I go back and forth on is mm-hmm. tank and healer. Uh, so, yeah, I'm I'm really, really excited. Uh, something that is kind of interesting that is coming out of the news this week. I wasn't expecting yeah. this, guys. But yeah. Konami is planning to outsource Silent Hill, Metal Gear, and Castlevania to third-party studios. Yeah, and it's it's kind of weird because at least for Silent Hill and Metal Gear in particular, they've been attacked. Like the rumors from like the last uh, sometime last year, they were linked to Sony. Like Sony was, they were just going to give it to Sony because you know Metal Gear used to be a PlayStation property. Um, Silent Hill wasn't a PlayStation like property per se, but a lot. Of, I think it sold more on PlayStation if I'm correct in thinking that. But um, so the, to them come out and say, oh, third parties are going to outsource this. It's kind of interesting because I know for a while for Silent Hill, right, 
um, Bloober team, the people who did the Blair Witch game and then who just mm -hmm. put out the Medium game uh, last month, have been kind of rumored to be attached to that. But now I think I think it was not debunked per se, but Bloober came out and says, "Yeah, I don't think we're kind. I don't think we're doing this, guys. You know, or like, or maybe they came out and said maybe it was just like um, a diversion to just basically um, say we're not doing it, <laughs> but." <laughs> Yeah, it's it's interesting, and you know, for Konami's side, it only makes sense, right? Because they make plenty of money on like pachinko machines and Yu-Gi-Oh cards, yeah. but they haven't touched like the last Metal Gear was Survive, and it was utter trash. Ooh. Um, <laughs> Ooh. But Silent Hill has been going on at least a decade plus at this mm -hmm. point without a last entry. You know, we were supposed to be getting Silent Hills with Norman Reedus as the Kojima project, but then they can that. Um, rest in peace, PT. Um, and then Castlevania. The last one I remember was Lords of Shadow 2 on the PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360. Yeah, I, I think this is the right move. Yeah. Because, like, now it's like, okay, we can still make money off the properties mm -hmm. that we own. Uh, we can find developers that we can work with, a.k.a. we can uh, hold them over a barrel. Um, yeah. <laughs> like, Konami, I think this is a good move. Uh, because it's like people do uh, do enjoy Silent Hill. They do enjoy mm -hmm. Metal uh, Metal Gear Solid. I almost said Metalvania. Um, <laughs> they do like Castlevania as well. So it's like finding different publishers, not publishers, different developers to mm -hmm. work on these games. Um, you know, because like you think of you think of Resident Evil. Resident Evil has like had a renaissance yep. after seven came out like it has been amazing yeah. to see how they've like turned it around after five and six and then seven has put them back on the path and i know a lot of people yep. are like i don't really care for seven which seven was the first one the only one that i've ever played yeah. but I've, <laughs> I've seen like you know four a lot of people like four uh but after seven it's been they remastered two and three two and three and two a lot of people really love three did pretty well as uh, also but yeah it's like you see eight's fixing to come out it looks really yep. good um, they're gonna remake yeah. four after that yeah so like they're doing really well and the only competitor that i think could stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with resident evil is silent hill so right. having that franchise firing on all cylinders is going to be awesome because with that competition is going to become more innovation from both of those Mm -hmm. those those ips and everything who do you think will we'll, we'll play a game here okay okay guys let us know in the chat who do you want to see develop silent hill metal gear and castlevania down in the mm -hmm. comments below okay we, we want to see your ideas for it because you might have a different idea than we do on it so yeah. let's start with silent hill derek who do you think would be a good developer for silent hill to to work with I mean, Bloober, I would like to see it, but see, I, and I haven't played the medium. I've heard really great things about the medium um, in terms of like a, a horror game. So I would plague them as like an up and coming studio to like just to give them a crack at that. Mm. But I wouldn't mind seeing like, you know, a Capcom, you know, come in and it's like, hey, we did Resident Evil. We can do Silent Hill, too. Or like maybe Tango Gameworks over there at Bethesda because um, mm -hmm. they did Evil Within. They're doing Ghostwire Tokyo right now. And Shinji Mikami, I know he's not heavily involved with that, the studio anymore, but he oversees what goes on there. Um, so I would like to see him just like see what he could like his weird mind from playing yeah. Evil Within one just to see what he can do for uh, Silent Hill. Um, what about you? Okay, so I'm going to give two options. Okay. The first seems more possible. Practical. Mm -hmm. um, having Red Barrel do it, which Ooh. is the, the developers of... Uh, Outlast. Outlast. Um, but the one that I would like to see do it is Remedy, because they did Alan Wake. You're right. And... Yeah. yeah um, well, what, control. I mean, yeah. I don't know if you played control at all, but control, I like, played it's it. not I've got really it now. creepy. Right. It's not creepy, but it's like that paranormal, like, eeriness to it. So they mm -hmm. uh, doing two games kind of in the same world, that would be perfect. And the storytelling would be great, too. Yeah. So yeah. I didn't even think yeah. of Remedy. That's wow. Yeah. Actually, you know what? Yeah, Remedy. That would be yeah. my choice, honestly, now. So yeah. um, for Metal Gear, 
it's too bad that they've already announced their next project because I would love to see IO Interactive take over Metal Gear mm. since they've done great with Hitman. They're oh, doing yeah. James Bond, so they're, do they're that's their next project. Now they could take, they still could take it on. You know, they could just split a team or whatnot. But uh, that would, I would kind of like to see them do that. If not, I don't know. I don't know who I would see else do Metal Gear other than maybe. Since Kojima kind of works with Sony, <laughs> like it would be like, hey, Sony, like Co Sony takes it's like calls, calls Konami is like, we'll take on the project. They call Kojima. It's like, hey, we've got an idea for you, <laughs> dude. That would be so backhanded. I think Kojima, I mean, Konami, Konami would pull out of that deal in a heartbeat. Kojima, oh, I don't yeah. think he would go back to it. Um, no. For me, I think with Metal Gear, um someone that I think would do well with it would be uh, Insomniac. I think Insomniac games would mm. do a really good job with. Yeah, especially with, after Spider-Man. Yeah, exactly. It would be something like I like them working on Spider-Man. Don't get me wrong, everybody. Mm -hmm. But I think having them do something that's also, it's like I'm sure there are people that are in those offices that really enjoy those games. But it's like mm -hmm. something like when Insomniac went from doing um ratchet and clank ratchet and clank to that it's like having that jump like they're able to stretch their legs think about uh kill zone uh guerrilla mm -hmm. games when they went from kill zone yeah. to horizon zero dawn it's like yeah you only get that when you take a, a risk you only yeah, get that exactly. when you take a risk so i think so. insomniac would be awesome uh another one that i think would do well uh, with it, which is kind of a weird choice, okay? So no one at me here, but I think the <laughs> storytelling and the combat would be really, really cool, but Santa mm -hmm. Monica. Okay, so which actually, uh, from a storytelling perspective, yes, but Santa Monica was going to be my pick to do Castlevania. Ah, uh, okay. So okay. Because, because originally I was going to be like, oh, let's have Respawn do it because Stig's there. He could do the, because mm -hmm. Castlevania, at least the Lords of Shadow, was very comparable to the old school God of War combat, yep. hack and slash. But let's let's also go to the people who founded God of War in Santa Monica and let's, let's just give it, because they have great pedigree with action adventure games. So let's just yep. do that. Or, or... I don't know. They could do. They could do either one, uh, Metal Gear or Castlevania. But I would love to see Naughty Dog take it on too, from a storytelling mm. perspective. Yeah. So, I could definitely see that. Yeah. Hmm. So, who's the? You might have just okay. I think Respawn would be a yeah. good uh, one for Castlevania. Yeah. I think they would be the awesome. Stig stigs there that that's the yeah. only reason so yeah i think that would be awesome um trying to think of who else would be good for castlevania yeah i'm trying to think yeah but i'll say that to me because there's not a lot of people like because none of those because ubisoft could do any of those too right but ubisoft doesn't tailor themselves other than like live service games like open world like massive games and none of those games with the exception of uh, phantom pain are open world yeah the only like i had two other ideas um i know the first two um oh lord it's the one with the four horsemen you play as war in the first one dark oh um yeah yeah dark siders which i think yeah the that's about say thq nordic yeah like but actually, like, try, unlike Dark Souls 3. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. You know, so having that, like, that would work really well with it. Or, mm -hmm. um, oh, man. I know we're going to talk about them here in a few minutes working with mm -hmm. uh, Halo, but the Coalition. Because, because yeah. it's kind of that, that darker kind of, like, you know, matter right. and all of that kind of stuff. Uh, but, like... I think it would be really cool. It would just be the combat would be different. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that would be the biggest thing to like overcome, but I think they do a really good job of world building in their games yeah. with gears and everything. Um, so yeah, I, that would be pretty interesting to me yeah. or even um, who's the guys that do dishonored uh, arcane 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 would be a cool mm -hmm. one as well. Yeah. Uh, to do. Yeah. That's a good. Yeah. Arcane could do any of those, right? Because like dishonored and prey are basically like 
supernatural, like kind of spooky, but like also stealth action adventure mm-hmm. games. So they could, Arcane could do any of those three, honestly. Yeah. Like, I, I don't know what I would see them do more out of those three. Probably maybe either Silent Hill or Castlevania, but yeah. I don't know. The, the, they could they could be tapped to do any of those projects. Yeah, which is kind of cool that you can say that you can do any three of those. Like, there's such yeah. different games and everything. Like, that's that's pretty high praise. Uh, so right. very, very interesting. Um, Bethesda, moving on, guys. I didn't mm-hmm. segue there, guys. I, I That was a non-sequitur. Uh, Bethesda's future on PlayStation reportedly set to be unveiled during an event in March. This yeah. is interesting because yeah. Xbox bought Bethesda a mm-hmm. few months ago, which was huge. Yeah, back, back in August, right before Series X pre-orders went up. Yeah. Big, big push, guys. It's very interesting to see, like, what they're going to do because we've already yeah. gotten how Xbox can work with other people because we saw when they bought Mojang how Minecraft mm-hmm. is literally still on everything. They yep. didn't sequester it away. They didn't put it in a box and said, you're just going to go on Xbox. They they let it play with everybody. And yep. it's still making money. They're still selling yeah. it. Even when they made Minecraft Dungeons, it was still on everything. everything. So I feel, to, to be smart here, it's like this is mm-hmm. a good investment. And... Xbox has talked about this several times. It's about people mm-hmm. having fun playing games wherever right. they're at. So I feel like I think, you know, a lot you you could feel like some foreshadowing, oh, they're going to lock it away and everything. Right. But I think they're going to blow people's minds at this event mm-hmm. and say that it's going to be continually on every platform. Yeah. And because, you know, they could do because, you know, before they bought um the Outer World studio um they said you know hey outer worlds is still coming to multiple uh systems but it's day one on game pass only on xbox so and i said this from the get-go right when they made that acquisition of bethesda they uh it's an easy out for game pass day one like yeah scott like elder scroll six right can come everywhere but you're you can get it on game pass day one and not spend any extra money you know they could capitalize yeah. on that market and make game pass stronger because while it's the game pass itself has had like forza horizon four gears five like strong entries it's mm. been a lot of middling titles for the majority of the part oh yeah um so having them do this with bethesda under their catalog would infinitely bolster game pass's value immediately especially when they start dropping yeah. because starfield is supposed to drop first which is their like space rpg like under bethesda like not done by any of their uh, secondary studios this is bethesda proper and the I've heard rumblings, like weak rumblings, that it could be this year. Who knows? We'll we'll have to see closer to time. But it's definitely coming in the next couple of years. So having a new IP under Bethesda, a new space RPG to rival Mass Effect, <laughs> you know, would be huge for them. Yeah. Um, and you know, they Phil Spencer came out after the acquisition because you know before this, uh, Tokyo uh, Tango GameWorks and mm-hmm. um, Arcane came out and said, "Hey, look, Deathloop and." Um, Ghostwire Tokyo are yeah. going to be timed exclusives on PS5. And Phil Spencer came out and said, look, those are still going to be honored, mm-hmm. um, but anything else is still up in the air right now. Yeah. And for me, like, I, I think that they will continue with it. Um, mm-hmm. You know, like Dan said, Bethesda has been going down here for several years now, so that might be for the best. Uh, I guess to yeah. sequester them away, but for me, I think, you know, with Microsoft buying Bethesda, I think mm-hmm. it's going to save them because yep. a lot of that is, again, from shareholder point of view, yeah. it's like you got to pump out games, you got to do this because Bethesda was putting out a ton of games for several years in a row instead yeah. of, and I'm talking about like Bethesda as a whole, not just yeah. like Bethesda, like studios Proper. type deal. Yeah. Um, so it's like it's very it's very challenging when you've got people that are talented 
that are being told you're going to put out something because we yeah. got to hit a deadline to make money. We got to hit this much right uh, in a quarter. They started smelling themselves essentially because you know for their other studios, right? We saw mm -hmm. how great Wolfenstein was. We saw how great uh, Dishonored was. We saw how great Evil Within One did, right? And then you know some of the sequels like Wolfenstein Two and Evil Within Two were leaps and bounds. Well. I, from Evil Within 1 to Evil Within 2, not such a great leap, but they were leaps and bounds better than the predecessors because they mm -hmm. took what people loved and just added more to it. Uh, but then you had, then you started seeing them try to get too watered down by putting out Prey, which was half-baked. Rage 2 was hit or miss. Like, for most of the part, Rage 2 was actually a decent game, but yep. it didn't come out with the same flair and fanfare that the other ones did, mm -hmm. with the exception of that terrible metal concert that they had for the E3 that year. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Well, and then like you, you got um, you got Wolfenstein two, or mm -hmm. it, it was it was like there was like the sub games that came yeah, out, yeah, like of, the like the like the like the little sub like one A like Old Blood and Young Blood, so yeah, yeah, and it's like you when you got to where there was like the twins, uh, yeah, in, that that was, per, and then you got. <laughs> The one that everybody's like, why aren't they talking about Fallout 76? Then you got Fallout 76, yeah. guys. Yes. Oh, and my gosh. Like, I think with uh, Cyberpunk coming out, like, it's taken a lot of the, the view off of Fallout 76. Yeah. <laughs> but Fallout 76 was a garbage truck on fire rolling down a hill. Yeah. Uh, it was awful. And, you know, it was literally unplayable at the launch. And mm -hmm. I think that was because of greed out of, you yeah. know, the publisher as a whole, uh, but majority it's like the people that were over everything. It was the stockholders, yeah. the CEOs and everything. It wasn't just because like the developers didn't want to do a good job. It was right. You know, Oh, we got to hit a deadline. Yeah. That's what yep. a lot of it comes down to. And for Fallout 76 in particular, right? Like, yeah, it came out and it was a debacle, like not just from a game perspective, but you know, there was issues with the nylon bag and the collector's oh, edition, God. the helmets being moldy. And then Bethesda just, PR just coming out and jumping the gun and basically like, Hey, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll fix this right quick. We'll give you $5 of in-game credit. And people were like, this is not what we want either. Yeah, <laughs> so, $5 that literally doesn't buy you anything, but we're no. getting, we're getting negative here. Cause I can feel it I in know. my body. Um, but, but well, I was just going to say that I was going to, I was going to turn it into a positive thing and I okay. feel bad for 76 because they were starting to get on the uptick, like with the wastelanders, like adding NPCs, like giving people what they wanted from the game and it was giving momentum. And then COVID happened. And then that, you know, just put everything, Thing to a halt and we haven't heard an update for that game since yeah and I, I think a lot of that is you know it is the covid side of things but right. I, i'm curious to see what they've been doing since they've been acquired right you know, because that it's a lot of a lot of having to adjust to being owned by somebody you know yeah instead exactly of, owning a bunch of people <laughs> you know what i mean Cause yeah, like right uh so i'm curious i'm curious to see like how things have changed you know when they sold yeah. uh were the people that were operating at the very high end of the company mm -hmm. did they come over or did they retire you know because they were making yeah. bank they were making bank guys oh easy uh, um so I'm, I'm just curious where all of that is going to go um playstation Today yep. we're going to have a conference. We're going to be covering yep. that. Uh, yep. But PlayStation got ahead of the conference, so just kind of, you know, put Temper some chum, expectations. Chum out in the water. That's what I feel yeah. like it is. It's kind of like we're not going to be talking about this stuff, but we're going to be talking about other things. It's just chum out yeah. in the water, guys. Uh, PSVR two is officially a thing. Uh, will be for PlayStation five only, and will include one cable. And we'll have a new controller that will include include key features from the dual sense. Yep. So I mean, we've seen. I mean, how many articles have I just put about how many freaking patents that PSVR that PlayStation <laughs> has filed for PSVR two? You know, like we. It was pretty much like a known quantity of this thing. They just had to make it official, like Facebook official type of thing. So getting it out here is, is like, hey, look, and it's years away, by the way. They said it's not in the immediate future. So probably in the next, probably about 2023, maybe late 2022 at the very earliest is when I expect VR2 to be a thing. Um, and having like, you know, still having a cable. Now, they said you owned a VR 
or at least borrowed a VR, right? Yeah, I used a VR for a while. Yeah, I had it too. Like, I'm curious to get your thoughts on it having a still having like a cable in general when like Oculus Quest 2 and like wireless VR headsets are becoming more of a thing now. Mm -hmm. But compared to the cables that PSVR 1 had, it is a godsend. You know, the just having one, maybe two cables at most is a definite changer. Oh, yeah. Like the original PSVR was a bulky, bulky thing. And having like having the cables, it was like a conscious thing that brought you out of the the experience. And I think, you know, having limiting it down to one, like if they could get rid of the cable, that would be great. But even like with the Oculus um, Quest 2, uh, if you want Mm -hmm. to play higher end games, you have to have the cable plugged into it to be able to the computer doing the processing. I got Um, you. So I think, you know, having that cable is like allowing it to do higher end stuff. I think the biggest thing with it is like, okay, you're going to put out a PSVR 2. Great. Awesome. Uh, yeah. You're also doing a new controller, which is great because I think the yeah. little wand thingies were dumb. Um, yeah, like they they seem totally useless. But mm-hmm. the biggest thing in my mind is, are they going to have games that people want to play? Yeah, because you know, again. And just to touch on the controller too, like the easiest thing to do, right? And it's the best thing about the PS5 controller is the haptic feedback, Mm -hmm. you know? And that's, you could, when they talk about key features, if they don't have haptic feedback in some form on there, because, you know, the headset itself could have the spatial audio um, Mm -hmm. that the PS5 does, but, you know, the easiest thing for the controller is the haptic feedback. But yeah, what, what makes a, what makes or breaks a console? We've discussed it many at ad nauseum games. And when the first came out, like the Arkham VR, like it, they had they had like the buzzwords like Batman Arkham VR like hit like until dawn rush of blood but in the beginning it felt like more like experiences rather than proper games like it's okay to have experiences just to prove like a proof of concept for VR but if it doesn't feel like a game and rather than if I'm just sitting there and letting the game play itself more than I'm playing the game that's a problem and yeah. we really didn't see this like the last big VR game was Iron Man VR which was fantastic Mm-hmm. Um, just so you know, the, the controls, like how it felt was great. Yeah. Um, so, well, but even w- after that, uh, was star Wars, uh, squadrons had a whole VR, You're right. like experience, like you could play the whole game in VR, including PS VR. Yeah. And a lot of yeah. people uh, that I know enjoyed getting to play on the PlayStation VR. Right. And I think that's a big thing too, right? Because we saw some third party support. Like I know rise of the tomb Raider was, I, th- I don't want to say the first, but definitely one of like the big, third-party titles to like say hey here's a vr mode for this game people love it and it's gonna you know even nba one of the like 2k had a vr version of the game or like some type of vr mode for it so how much third-party support is it going to give because like we see like what we saw with the wii u if you don't have some type of third-party support you're gonna be dead on arrival before you even launch yeah yeah and i think it's like making sure people are doing uh that to make it work you know it, it's mm-hmm. it's like you gotta have like you were saying you gotta have third party support if there's no third parties like coming to it or supporting it like like star wars squadrons like yeah you gotta have people doing it because first parties are not going to jump into all of that they can't you can't make everybody do that because there are yeah. some experiences that just don't work like yeah uncharted if it had vr it wouldn't mm. make sense. It's like this is no. not a game that that works for this. So, right. um, yeah. And Dan says, "I love VR with pilot games, Ace Combat, and Star Wars Squadrons." I forgot and, about the Ace Combat VR mode, so that was great too. Yeah, I, I really want to try out the the Iron Man one. That sounds pretty. Yeah, cool. me too. Sounds pretty. Um, cool. um, another thing too, real quick, to, is like just with the VR headset, like. I, I'm sure there has been issues with it on Oculus Quest, but I haven't heard it being like a major issue, but they need to figure out a way to combat motion sickness with PSVR 2, because I know oh that was like God. a heavy negative that, that uh, was my when biggest it first thing. came out. That was yeah. my biggest thing with VR uh, was, because I've only used the PSVR, but anytime I would play, I'd get so sick. I remember there was a night I was playing Resident Evil 7. I was yes, close to the I remember end. that. And I was like, okay, guys, you know, I got the VR headset. We're going to do the rest of the game in VR. 
and I started the stream and everything, which <laughs> was awful because it's like I couldn't see chat to begin with. But um, like I played probably 15 to 20 minutes and I felt like I was going to hurl everywhere. Yeah. So yep. I agree 100 percent. They got to do something to combat the the motion sickness. Mm hmm. You put on that headset, and then the, the key phrase, it was at this moment that he knew he messed up. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> um, so, Some more PlayStation news, guys. We're getting them all out of the way before the state of play. PlayStation exclusives are to come, more PlayStation exclusives to come to PC, starting with Days Gone this spring. Uh, Days Gone came out when, Derek? Uh, April of 2019. Okay, so it's been a little under About two a, years. Almost two years, yeah. Yeah. And it's following um, the track because Death Stranding was like the first major. And I know it was – Death Stranding was different, right? Because Kojima kind of had a thing set up from the get-go. It's like, hey, I'm going to do PS4 first, but then also put it on PC in like six months. But then we saw Horizon follow that suit. Yeah. So – and it's it's actually breathed life into these games again. Mm -hmm. um, so Days Gone only kind of made sense for like that mid tier just to see like a game that came out with a rough shoddy start. It's like, hey, can this find love again in a different ecosystem? Can it find love again? <laughs> Cause it's not that good. <laughs> I do <laughs> I do want to play it. I haven't got to play it yet. So it is something that I want to try. I just don't yeah. know uh, when that's going to happen because I got a lot. Of, a lot of other games to to play right um, and it's in, and it's interesting too right because we've heard room because you know this follows the track of a lot of rumors of playstation exclusive coming to pc right mm -hmm. because there's always been like god of war 2018 has been linked to coming to pc last yeah. of us one remastered has been linked to come to pc so this is it seems like because days gone was also on that list too so it seems like it's keeping with that track of rumors yep. and Will we get to a point where it's like Xbox, right? Like an exclusive launch is day and date. Like Gears 5 came out day and date with PC and Xbox, right? Will PlayStation ever get to that? Probably not. At least not yep. till not not anytime soon. But, you know, to see it give give other players a chance to play their great, like award-winning exclusives, minus days gone, um, is great. I hit the wrong button. I went to the wrong <laughs> thing. I went to the game. Uh, and not your face. Um, oh. I think we'll see God of War for sure. Yeah. And makes sense. Easy. Last of Us would go there because it's mm -hmm. everybody's like, oh, Last of Us so amazing. I still haven't played the second one. Um, I would like, I think Spider Man will go as well. Oh, easily. One that would be really cool to see go would be like the uncharted series like i think with yeah. playstation having like this backlog of amazing games that only yep. people on playstation have been able to play it's like you can do that for a very long time yeah like you can do yeah. that for a very long time and not run out because they've exactly. been having amazing games for so long so I think imagine when Ghost of Tsushima comes to PC, that's going to be fantastic. Yeah. Oh my God. I couldn't even imagine that game like running on a PC. Can you imagine the specs they'd have to put on that thing? Because days gone, right? Like it's not like it's, it's very detailed, but it's not a demanding game, but they said, Hey, it's going to have an unlocked frame rate in this for the PC version. I'm like, that's a crazy man. Ghost ghost. Oh, oh. yeah. <laughs> If you don't have a PlayStation, guys, you definitely should go get one so you can play Ghost of Tsushima because <laughs> it is it is quite literally the best thing since sliced bread. Uh, yep. Which was, which actually, Betty White is older than sliced bread. Wow. Yep. yep. I don't know if that's a great or a sad thing, but you know, it's it's definitely it's definitely a, a major turning point. <laughs> it is a major turning point. If you've never had so, to slice your own bread, you don't know what pain is. <laughs> Let me ask you this too. How do you think it will just pertain? Because so far what we've seen is like PS4 titles, right? Come to PC. Mm -hmm. Do you think they would dig further in the well and like bring up like, hey, Infamous One and Two Pack is coming to PC? Ooh. Some of the Kill Zone games, like the old Kill Zone games or old God of War games, like, do you think they go that far back or just go for what hit on the like more relevant like to last generation? I think they do the things that's going to make money. And I think that yeah. is do the last generation and, you know, what's moving forward. Because, like, 
Last of Us 2, God of War, Ghost, mm -hmm. um, Uncharted, like yep. the big ones, the Spider Man, like those games made money. Days gone. And, uh, um, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, it's it's the big ones that have come out. Uh, I don't think we see Dreams, uh, which I think Dreams yeah. coming to PC would breathe life into that game oh, yeah. a ton, though. Because um, just on the creation mechanics alone. Yeah. And I think it would it would bring that game so much further than what is happening right now. And there, there's a right. good bit of people playing dreams and everything, but I think it would like, because PC players, like there are a lot of people that like to create things. I yeah. know Dan, he's one of the guys that watches. He's in the chat. Um, like he plays space engineer. So he loves like getting to create things. And there are people yeah. that want to create their own games and experiences. Yeah. And that would be awesome. So I don't know. Maybe maybe dreams needs a new home. Maybe it needs it doesn't need to be. I could see them. How about this? Because you know they did an early access version on PS4, right? Um, where it was just the creation tools, and they finally brought the story mode over um, back last year. So I could see them. I could see Sony be like, "Hey, we'll put the creation tools on PC, but not the mm -hmm. story mode, because no, not a lot of people care for that." Yeah, yeah. I think it'd be great. I think it'd be great. Yeah. I think I think it'd be wonderful. Mm -hmm. Uh. Moving on, guys, some more PlayStation news. Play at Home Initiative returns with free games over the next four months, March to June, starting with Ratchet & Clank 2016 Remake on March 1st. Yep. So I don't remember it from last year, to be honest with you. Like, it probably got, with COVID running rampant, it probably just got lost in the ethos of stuff. But it, it, it's only perfect, right? Because they just, last week, they gave Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart a release date of June 11th. Mm -hmm. And then it's like, hey, we're, we're doing uh, Play at Home Initiative again this year. And the first game you're going to get, Ratchet and Clank 2016 remake, just to get you hyped for Rift Apart. Yeah. And I really, like, I didn't finish it. I need to finish it. So now that yeah. it's free, I can play it again. Uh, but the game was great. Like, it looked great. It played well. I know it was just the first game being remade and everything because they did the movie uh as well right. at that point in time but i really enjoyed ratchet and clank so if you haven't got the chance to play it definitely should check it out have they listed any of the other games that they're going to do no they i know i know because they're also doing like entertainment right like i know new funimation members get some like uh free content um in this time period as well i think like starting march 25th but they they did they just said more games are coming um, but they wanted to lead off with Ratchet and Clank since it's about to be here in like next week. So um, I don't know what games. I'm sure it'd be like older titles that they would do. Mm -hmm. Like, hey, maybe maybe not Horizon Complete Edition, but maybe Horizon one, like just the base game. Maybe yep. like an old game, like say Infamous Second Son, um, or maybe First Light, something like that. But I kind of want to see if you know, it go longer because, you know, this whole free game initiative, you know, we've seen Epic Games do it. We've seen Steam do it. They rotate out games every month. So I would kind of see, you know, if they're doing it for a second year and if it gains like more momentum over these next couple months, I'd like to see them extend it a little bit, you know? Yeah, I think it's mostly like just goodwill kind of uh, yeah, them doing it and everything. But I good definitely PR. like... Yeah, good PR. But I think it would be cool to see, like you said, longer. Um, I'm curious, like, starting out with a game set in, like, from 2016 means, like, yeah. we're going to be getting some some older games for sure. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I'm curious uh, to see where they go from there. Uh, right. it's a good It's a good start. So hopefully they'll yeah. keep strong and not just give away bad indie games, you know. I'm not saying <laughs> indie games are bad. I'm saying there are bad indie games. <laughs> like the trash ones, like the ones that are like literally bad, like yeah. got a 4.0 out of 10. Yeah, like Black Panther. Like, not like... Oh the, my the God. Movie Black Panther. The but, Life you know, of Black... <laughs> yeah. I yeah. watched Jim Sterling's review of that, and yeah. yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So definitely don't want any of that. Uh, some game updates for everyone. Um, Gran Turismo 7 has been delayed to 2022. God of War Ragnarok probably will not be released till 2021. And Horizon Forbidden West is still on track track for the second half of 2021. So, and it's no surprise about two of these, right? Because 
granted, this is essentially them saying God of War Ragnarok's delayed, right? And I know I flipped my, you know, my proverbial lid when uh, their second, you know, like PlayStation 5 reveal event back in, what was it, September, October, that they said, hey, God of War Ragnarok at the end, it was the, the one final thing, and it's a 2021, and, I, and at first I was like, no, we are not getting forbidden what, a, uh, uh, of the sequel to Horizon and the sequel to God of War in the same year. It's just not possible. So yeah. it's sort of like a duh statement, <laughs> you know, but I think, uh, it was just, and I think it was just to hype the console. Yeah. Make you believe it's like, hey, we got stuff coming soon. Like the stuff mm. you loved, we got it coming soon. Yep. Um, so it's no surprise, um, especially with Horizon coming in the second half. Like it, I really think now that with Rift Apart being in June, I think Horizon easily could be their fall game. And it could be yep. like, because Spider-Man launched in September, the year it came out, and it did gangbusters. Mm -hmm. I could see them doing a similar situation where they put it out in September, like, not right in the holiday rush, but, like, just to get you enough for, oh, like, yeah. you hyped and give it enough time to breathe. So I could see it there, and it's just like, why would you squeeze in God of War and, like, have them cannibalize each other? So it makes sense. Um, Gran Turismo, I don't think it's a surprise because in the article it said that it's because of COVID issues and also, like, the the COVID and the cyberpunk thing are like the two easy cop outs, right? Because you know, working from home is just like like you talked about it um the last couple episodes. Like working from home is not as easy as everyone makes it out to be. Like it's not just like Zoom calls or whatnot. It's like more intricate time for developing a game. And then plus, you know, no one wants to be the next cyberpunk. <laughs> so Yeah, definitely not. It reminds me of uh when Titanfall two was released. Mm -hmm. wasn't it released the same day as battlefield one no it wasn't the same day but it was like three weeks of like top tier shooters coming out because it was like battlefield one one week titanfall two the week after that and then whatever year call of duty was that year yeah so it's like yeah don't don't release your your big big guns like right right between each other like it's just, right Cause I know, cause I think it, I think we covered that E uh, three, and we looked at the release dates and like, why are they releasing Battlefield and Titanfall a week apart? That's stupid. <laughs> yeah, and having like God of War come out, like uh, God of War, the past one that came out in mm -hmm. twenty eighteen, came out April twentieth. So like doing mm -hmm. September, doing Horizon, and then yeah. the following year having yeah. God of War come out in April. That would make sense. It would kind of follow that trend. Um, yeah. and that's something that Sony has done. It's like within the first quarter, they release uh, exactly a big, release exclusive. a big game. Mm -hmm. and, the, and it's paid dividends, right? Because Horizon came out uh, pretty much, it came out like the last day of February, but pretty much spring. Um, God of War came out in April. Days Gone came out in April. You know, they've, they mm -hmm. found success in releasing a game in like the first, at least the first half of the beginning of the year. And it's done gangbusters. Yeah. Because I think, you know, like once April gets there, it's like you're not, dealing with the effects of christmas in the beginning right. of the year uh and then tax returns are coming in yep uh so it's just it's just smart you know and so yeah i think we we definitely see it around april um derek i'm gonna let you take the quick hits for this okay. week's news so hit me hit me so we we can talk about this. So the first one I wanted to leave off with, because guys, like I said, a lot of news has happened. Like BlizzCon happening came out of nowhere, so we figured we had to talk about that. And a lot of other stuff has come out, and we're going to keep talking about more stuff today. But uh, the quick hits that might get lost in the ethos, and the first two I kind of want to talk just a little bit about. Um, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1 and 2 is coming to PS5, Series X, and S, and Switch. Um, they haven't given a release date. You got to think it'll probably be later this year, probably like a summer or around the same time it came to PS4 and Xbox One last year. Um, now, the downside, and we kind of talked about this, about, you know, Activision wanting, wanting money, right? Last week, they came out and said, hey, Crash Bandicoot 4 is going to come with a free upgrade to next gen. Tony Hawk, though, if you just bought the standard edition digitally, you won't get, you have to pay a $10 upgrade fee to get it on next gen. But if you bought the deluxe edition, you can get it. You get it free of charge on the next gen versions. Um, mm -hmm. What? What? How do you feel about that one, Zach? Uh, they want money. Um, yeah. <laughs> other than the the upgrade side of things, um, if you are a huge fan of Tony Hawk mm -hmm. and you own, if you haven't bought it yet or haven't beaten it, uh, I'd highly suggest getting it for either of the consoles. I'm curious to see how the Switch one would 
um yeah form you gotta imagine that that's gonna be partly a cloud download yeah um and especially with those baby buttons like i, I don't yeah. see how, how that's that's gonna work out but highly highly suggest getting tony hawk it is amazing especially if you mm-hmm. are uh, a fan of that series they did a ton of amazing work on that on that game yep. and one of your favorite things about last year yep one of my favorite things covered our first episode of this show guys yep all right, hit me with so, the next one, man. The next one is they made it official. It came a couple weeks later than they than they said it would. But Anthem Next, which is I guess the revamped version of Anthem, is officially canceled. We talked about it when it first came up about almost a month ago. At this point, we're not surprised. We both kind of figured it's dead in the water, especially with how it like just outside uh, perspective was on that game so not surprised on that at all now one thing that they did say i saw this morning was they now came ea came to bioware and it's like hey look y'all um it's like look we saw success on fallen order and then we saw how bad anthem was so bioware we're gonna let you work um on dragon age and i'm assuming mass effect as solely a single player because originally the plan was going to be live service for at least dragon age so now they're backtracking and be like look what you did for the original for the other games earlier in the earlier in the decade, keep doing that. Don't worry about doing this live service crap. What the thing that's made them successful and the storytelling <laughs> and you know we we shouldn't change those things just to line our pockets. What? A concept, a concept. <laughs> I, I don't. So, I don't even know what to say, guys. So uh, that, I hate to see it. You know that anthem fell. F- flat on its face but you know when you take a studio that is known for storytelling and immersive worlds and then you mm-hmm. force them to make a game that is about making money essentially mm-hmm. um you know this is what you get so yeah yep so but glad to see that they're gonna let bioware be bioware again and not tie their hands to stupid ideas or at least stuff that didn't make sense for games um, moving on, these two are going to be qu- real quick. Uh, Fall, as we saw in the direct last week, guys, Fall Guys is coming to Switch in the summer. Uh, a couple days after the fact, they also came out and said, "Hey, Fall Guys is also coming to Xbox consoles along with the Switch version this summer." G- glad to know that it'll co- be coming to all platforms now. Yep. Um, Rainbow Six Siege crossplay and cross progression is being actively worked on, and you know, just to hit on this real quick, just on my side. I'm kind of surprised they haven't already but with how crazy successful Siege has been year oh, yeah. in and year out. The player base has just keeps going up or at least stays consistent with how the Rainbow Six Invitational like Pro League has just blown up. I am really surprised that ha- this has not been a thing and that they are now just essentially working on it at this point. So yeah. it's kind of like Ubisoft, you're miss- you already missed the mark on this one, man. Yeah, because like you saw uh, with... Um destiny like they they started doing this a few years ago with destiny and everything and Mm -hmm. i think this is moving forward cross play and cross progression have to be in a game for it to be completely successful because it's like people want to play with one another and they might they might be on pc or they might have a playstation or they might have an xbox but these live service games need to be able to communicate and you know, I might want to play on my PC, but if I, you know, want to go somewhere, I'm not going to take this hulking beast that's sitting beside me. Mm-hmm. I'm going to take my PlayStation, you know, and I yeah. still want to be able to play. So I'm glad to see that they're doing it. But like you were saying, a yeah. uh, little little too late uh, on yeah. that. But I think it's, it's going to help. And Gary Witta put it best, too. He's like, you used to be an outlier if you had cross-progression or, like, cross-play in your game. Now you're an outlier if you don't have it at this point. Yep. So, but now, just a couple next things. Uh, Destroy, they apparently put out an updated trailer for Destroy All Humans remake. Um, remember, the remake of the first game came out uh, last July. And apparently in this new trailer, there's been a hint at maybe, at a possible Destroy All Two Humans 2 remake. So look more on that down the road um because i don't know how well the first one sold but Mm -hmm. i guess it sold well enough to consider doing a remake of the second game like i do want to play it but you know what i really want to see is a stubs the zombie remake i know we're getting it re-released but i need me some stub the zombie remake so it looks good i need to see all the the visceral details (laughs) next one uh titanfall 3 will be up to respawn if they want to do it um 
we've seen rumors go back and forth, you know, like is Titanfall three. And I think EA and um, uh, Respawn have been playing uh, tennis for the longest time. It's like, all right, you make the decision. No, you make the decision. Um, and, you know, then then it was pretty much put on the back burner, basically saying like, hey, we got the we got this awesome Fallen Order game. Now we're probably going to work on the sequel now. So we're going to leave Titanfall three on the back burner. But now EA is just like, you know what? We're going to let you guys decide, because while Titanfall 2 did massive success, you're also bringing in this other success with Fallen Order. So we're going to let you decide when to do Titanfall 3. Well, and you also got to think they're doing Apex. So, that, yep, good point. Uh, and that's know, making them money hand over fist, too. Yeah. Not as much as Fortnite, but it's up there. Oh, yeah, it's definitely very, very successful. It's in the same universe as Titanfall. So I'm curious yep. to see, you know, if they do decide to make a Titanfall 3, does it help that apex is there in the same right. universe do they carry over a lot of those players to titanfall 3 because like the gameplay is drastically different between titanfall and apex because you know you've got your hero kind of shooter type deal uh but with titanfall is uh I, I like Titanfall a lot. Mm -hmm. Like the the story in Titanfall 2 was really good. I never finished it, but I really yeah. enjoyed it. And the only thing I'll say real quick too is on this is like you've kind of spurred this idea. Um you know how Call of Duty, you know, the last couple get like uh, Modern Warfare and uh um Cold War have come this and then they did Warzone, Battle Royale, yep. and then those progression in those other games have carried over into Warzone. Will they do that with Titanfall 3? Will whatever progression you do in multiplayer carry mm -hmm. over to uh, Apex in some yep. except to some degree, you know? So that'll be interesting to see if they kind of do follow that same formula. Yeah, um, I think it'd be cool. One for you, Zach. Uh, Star Wars Republic Commando, which has been teased heavily the last couple months, is coming to PS4 and Switch on April 6th. It's not really necessarily a remake. It's just more like our HD port over to those consoles. Yeah, I was actually looking at this last night uh, that this is available on PlayStation 5, PC. No, not PlayStation 5. Sorry. It's available on PC and Xbox Series mm -hmm. X and Xbox One right now uh, right. with a multiplayer component. This version that's going to be coming to the PlayStation 4 and Switch will not have that multiplayer component. It will right. just be the single player. Uh, I'm really excited because Republic Commando is one of my favorite Star Wars games of mm -hmm. all time. Um, I loved the squad combat, getting to tell people to go here, there, and the other. And yep. it was the only time, guys, the only time that I felt like a super battle droid could rip me in half. Like, <laughs> I remember there was a hallway, and this super battle droid is like, I hit the wrong button again, guys, sorry. The super battle droid's like coming down this hallway, and it's like four Republic commandos shooting this thing, trying to destroy it. And it took everything that we had to take this thing down. So that's huge. Like the actual mm -hmm. like combat and everything was just yeah. so good, so visceral. And I, I'm really excited to see it come. And I, I'm I'm curious to see how much it is uh, being a it, because you know technically it's on Xbox via backwards compatibility for ten dollars, but they said this version coming to PS4 and Switch will be fifteen. Okay, okay. So that's not bad. At least it's not like a whole new another thing. But I would love. Right. Love to get it and do like a uh, playthrough of it on uh, stream. I was going to say, like, which one would you buy it for since it's coming to Switch and PlayStation? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> like, I'm not, big on I'm not big on trophies, so it's not that big of a deal. But getting right. the Switch this, these days is a little bit more difficult. Yeah. <laughs> you have better <laughs> luck at winning the lottery. Yeah. <laughs> And then the last one for the quick hits and the last one for the news overall, guys, 343 Industries has received, I don't know if they're still receiving help, but they have received help from the coalition on Halo Infinite. And if you didn't catch what we talked about earlier in the show, the coalition is the people that work on Gears of War right now. So it's interesting to see them give help. But you know what the way it's kind of like life imitates art type of thing, right? Maybe that's not the right turn of phrase. Anyway. Halo Infinite, the gameplay we saw of it, they're kind of like doing what Gears 5 did, because Gears 5, while they didn't introduce open world, they introduced like big areas to go and explore and have side quests, and that's what kind of Halo Infinite is copying with their story. So I wonder if they brought in to do help on that, do help on multiplayer, or they, it didn't really specify what type of help they had. So I'd like to see what's kind of like, 
what kind of influence Coalition had with Gears, uh, the Halo Infinite development. Yeah, and some of that, like, it could be either a really good thing or a really yeah. bad thing, uh, because in my mind, it could be, like you were saying, that it was them, you know, showing, like, the process of, like, how to make kind of these hub worlds essentially and how it could right. be used to branch off into the actual story and all of that um but the other side of that it could be where 343 was in such a bad position for halo yeah. Infinite that they needed another developer to come in and microsoft uh ponied up with a coalition to get them on mm -hmm. track uh, right. I'm hoping that it's the first option that they were just yeah. getting, uh, you know, the expertise that the coalition had developed through Gears Five. Mm -hmm. I hope that it is not the the other option because I just would go to show that Halo Infinite was in a really really bad place. I was just gonna say the, it doesn't bode well because we have as we've seen over the last couple of months, the game was rough. So yep. <laughs> rough. game needed Jesus. Yeah, so. it did. <laughs> really, really so, bad. But we'll see. I mean, I think the other telltale sign is if you see, like, I wouldn't say any other studio, but other studios like Undead Labs, since they have, like, a State of Decay has, like, shooter elements, or, like, mm. other studios that have made shooter games have come in and are also helping 343, then that bodes a bad sign. Other, yeah. Because I know we've seen also, like, at least head honchos leave 343 over the last couple of years, right? Because of development issues and creative differences. So it could just be like maybe more people that uh, left that we know of um, or that we, they made one to make public about and they're just bringing in extra manpower because they can't exactly hire right now. Yeah, I, I think I'm, I'm hoping for the best here. I hope that it yeah. is based off of their expertise that they – they developed while making Gears Five, which right. guys, if you haven't played Gears Five, you're really missing Fantastic. out. Fantastic, really missing out. Gears Five is one of the best, especially since the Coalition took over development mm -hmm. um, of the franchise and everything. I really, really enjoy Gears Five. Mm -hmm. Gears Four, not so much. Um, yeah, but Gears Five was a like it made me believe in the franchise again, and that that was. I'm I'm hoping that Halo Infinite will make me believe in the franchise again, like Gears Five made me believe in Gears again. But now is Gears Five better than the best Gears of all time, Gears Judgment? <laughs> <laughs> like Judgment wasn't that bad. Okay, I'm gonna just we, we'll take a, a minute yeah. here. Judgment it, it wasn't had its moments as bad because of this there was a dlc that came with judgment uh after like the original release where you yeah. got to play as rom oh my yeah. god that was so yeah. good and like it was multi like you could play with multiple people so you, like one person was rom and then like you had like like three or four other brutes that you you would just like mow people down oh it was so good like sending out the krell and everything so yeah yeah it was a good thing that came yeah. out of judgment because i saw that and i texted you i think and you were you were so giddy about that oh, yeah. um <laughs> oh, yeah. but to get to the chat a little bit uh welcome back brandon glad you're back with us bud um tr uh, tr uh gears 2 is better than judgment if you couldn't tell, I was being facetious because I know Gears Judgment is widely considered <laughs> one of the worst Gears games. Yeah. So, you know, the the worst game of any franchise is just about better than Gears Judgment. <laughs> All right. I, I don't know about that, man. I don't know about that. So, E.T.? E.T.? Way, way worse. franchise. Franchise. E.T. is not a franchise. <laughs> <laughs> um, but... But yeah, Brandon also said, I didn't mind Gears 4, but Gears 5 was better. 100%. And Dan, oh, yeah. Said I tried judgment, but I didn't care for it. Well, you shouldn't be judging others, people. You shouldn't be judging <laughs> others. You shouldn't be judging judgment. I'm just kidding. Uh, yeah. I, like the story was pretty good. the The landing at the end was really bad. I will tell you that yeah, about it, judgment. It was. Uh, but two is probably two and three are definitely like the the best in my opinion, like story wise, because like it really mm -hmm. ramped up. But five is way up there as well. Yep. 
There you go. That sounds like a, a Zach Dyke statement from uh, Brandon right there. Judgment is the best game of all time. <laughs> That's am, awesome. am, I number, am I number one? Troll two. Good night. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys. Well, we're going to wrap this episode up. Derek, again, thank you so much for being on. And as always, putting together all of our topics and making everything run smoothly. And uh, I like the quick hits. We had enough to yeah. make quick, quick hits. Exactly. <laughs> Sometimes it's <laughs> it's so shallow that we uh, get to we get to just go on about other things. But thank you right. again, man, for being here. And everybody, make sure to go watch us live on twitch.tv slash nerdcave network. We are live every Monday, Thursday, and Tuesday at 7 p.m. and then Saturday mornings at 9 a.m. This show rotates a few days throughout the week, but come and be a part of it at 2 p.m., whichever day that may be. Uh, yeah. And be it's like rush, it's like a dartboard you just throw it in whatever sticks is the day <laughs> yes and guys make sure to check out our state of play coverage that we're going to be having up as well uh that you get to see what sony is all about we covered a lot of sony yeah. news so i'm curious yep. what the state of play is but guys we thank you so much for being here let uh, Derek swallow his uh, his water over there. <laughs> just <laughs> guzzling it now uh but guys thank you for being here today this has been zach and Derek. Y'all have a blessed week. Bye.